what is up guys and welcome back to another video today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be turning these two deer heads hopefully into something just like this one this is a european mount that i did for my uh 2017 buck it was my first time doing it and uh still to this day it is just as white as the day that i made it and i'm really happy with uh how that one came out i'm going to try it on these two bucks this is my 2019 buck with the muzzle loader and that's my brother's first deer and first buck with his muzzle loader as well. So ideally what you do is you skin these deer heads out as soon as you get them butchered up. And the reason is, is because you don't want the uh, grease, spats, and oils and everything from the skull and the membrane around it uh, to soak directly into the bone. Otherwise, it makes it really hard to get it like a clean white color like that one is. So I'm going to skin these guys out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in a Dawn and uh, water solution and soak them for a little while. Hopefully it'll start to pull and cut the grease off of the skull and then I'll boil them later. All right guys, so what I'm doing here is just removing the skin from the skull and you don't have to be pretty about this or anything like that. That's the nice part about doing a European mount is that uh, pretty much all that's gonna be remained is bone structure, which you can't really cut through. So all that I'm doing is just removing the skin and flesh and anything that I can get off of the skull, I'm um, taking it off and that makes it a lot easier to clean once everything's boiled up. And it doesn't have to be pretty. The goal is to just remove as much as you can. And you're definitely going to want to use a really sharp knife for this. It just makes your life a lot easier, uh, especially on some of the small cuts that you have to do up around the antlers. And don't forget, the sooner that you skin the skull out, uh, the better. It'll come off a lot easier. This one, I waited a little too long for, and it's almost like the skin, especially on top of the head, becomes one with the bone. And it just makes it really uh, a lot harder on yourself than it has to be. So if you can... Skin them as soon as you get it. It'll make the skull whiter and it'll make your skinning job way easier. Now that I've got the majority of the meat and skin and everything else like that off of the skulls, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to soak them in a simple uh, water and Dawn solution. I'm going to do this for about 24 hours and hopefully it'll pull some of that stuff that's kind of dried onto the skull uh, further off of it. Keep in mind that Dawn just cuts grease and fats and everything. It's not going to uh, etch the bone or anything like that and it's not going to discolor the antlers. This is simply to pull more fats and grease off the skull before we start boiling. After about 24 hours, I put it into a steel pot that I can boil with, and I just add Dawn and water to the pot. That's it, nothing else. We are gonna whiten these skulls later, and that's where the Salon 40 uh, solution will come into play. The Salon Care 40% by volume cream is just hydrogen peroxide. It's a hair care product that you can get pretty much any hair store, and uh, it does just a fine job whitening these skulls. So I boil my deer skull for about 10 minutes, just until the flesh starts kind of breaking off of the skull pretty easy. It's going to make cleaning uh, a lot easier. So this is what the skull is going to look like when you pull it out of the Dawn and water boiling. And as you can see, there's all uh, the flesh is still on there. Everything's still pretty stuck to it and dirty like that. And this is where the cleaning comes in. What I'm using to clean the skull is just a Ryobi pressure washer. It works pretty good and you just have to be careful not to hit it off the antlers because you might discolor them. Keep that pressure washer only on the skull and also be careful not to blow through the nasal cavity or to blow through any of the bones. If you use the zero degree nozzle, you gotta be kind of careful of what you hit off because you can pretty easily mess up some of the bone structure on the deer. But other than that, it's pretty much just keep washing, get as much of the stuff off of the skull as possible. Uh, pick and pluck if you have to. I'm using some pliers here to get the rest of the eye socket out and up in the nasal cavity and everything like that but every single ounce of flesh that is not bone has to go otherwise you're going to have a stinky mount and it's just not going to be pretty don't forget to get these earbuds uh, just take a screwdriver or anything pointy stick it in there and break those out it'll also let you get to the uh, the brain cavity a lot easier to clean that out and this is what it'll start to look like nothing in the nasal cavity nothing in the brain cavity uh, earbuds gone clean of anything that is not pure bone. It is a little bit off colored, but we're going to solve that in our next step of whitening. So before we start whitening these deer skulls, I'm going to be saran wrapping up the antlers. I'm going to start right kind of where the burr uh, meets the pedicle and they, they meet together there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap from there all the way up about six inches up the antlers. Then after that, I'm going to take the electrical tape and I'm going to press it pretty hard into that burr. And the reason is, is because I want to maintain 100% of the color of the antlers. Uh, you can recolor antlers, but it's kind of a pain in the butt, and if I can avoid it, I'm going to. Once both the antlers are taped up, and as you can see again, the tape is pressed firmly into the burr or the base of the antler, we're ready to start whitening. 
What I'm doing now is just putting the skull back into a clean bucket of water. Uh, so it's just water in there right now. And I'm gonna add in that Salon Care 40% uh, by volume cream. And then I brought it to a slow boil, being extremely careful not to let it boil over or for that whitening solution to touch those antlers. It's up to you how long you want to boil the skull and the whitening solution for, but at a certain point, it will almost start to like etch the bone away, so you really don't want to leave it in there any longer than you have to. Once the skull is white enough and you're happy with it, uh, get it out of there right away and over to the rinsing station. I think I left them in there for about 8 to 10 minutes in this case to the point that I was happy with it, and uh, as you can tell, they came out quite a bit whiter than when they went in. Once I'm done whitening the skulls, I bring them back over to the pressure washer just to give them a good rinse down. You don't want that stuff to continue to sit on the skull. So rinse all the uh, boiling solution off the skull, and then we can get that antler wrap off. And removing the antler wrap, just make sure not to cut into the antlers if you're gonna do it the way that I'm doing it. Uh, it kind of like seized up on itself, like melted to itself almost a little bit. So I decided to cut it off, but make sure not to score up the antlers. You can see I maintain the colors of the antlers pretty much entirely on both of them, which I'm really happy with, all the way down right to the burr of the antler. And that's why I taped it the way that I did, right up to the burr, to whiten it right up to the bottom of it, and also maintain that antler color on top of it. After letting them dry overnight, I brought them back outside and set them up on this little grate. And what I'm going to put on them is a product called Mop and Glow. It almost gives them a protective coating, kind of like a shiny look too. And I actually like the look of it. It makes it look more professional. It's up to you if you want to use this though. All right guys, so here are our completed skulls. Uh, this one in the center here is the one that I did back in 2017. But the one on the uh, left and the right are the ones that I just did here yesterday. They've had plenty of time to dry with the uh, mop and glow on them and everything like that. And uh, they definitely look really good. Right up to the uh, pedicle of the antler there. The color stayed on the antlers perfectly. I didn't have to recolor them at all. And uh, overall, I'm really happy with how it came out. So one thing that I'm uh, not exactly 100% pleased with on these two is this nasal bone going right up here. There's kind of a, a split in it. And on this one, you can see it's intact. That's how it should look. But it's it's not too noticeable. And this is my skull anyways, so uh, it doesn't really bother me much. I could glue it back together if I wanted to. But for what I'm going to use it for and display it for, that's just fine. The other thing is on this deer right here, I blew out some of the nasal cavity and even though it does look symmetrical, uh, it, it still isn't exactly what it's supposed to look like. This one has the nasal cavity intact and uh, so doesn't this one pretty much too and that's how it's supposed to look. But uh, not a huge deal, but just minor things. And last but not least is the bone that goes or should go uh, right here. And as you can see, it's still on that one and still on the uh, the first one that I did. And my brother, he didn't mind it. It, it didn't bug him much, but it kind of bothers me knowing that uh, I could have done a little bit better of a job. If you guys have any tips on how to do it better or how to make them more white or anything good like that, feel free to share it down below. I'm always interested in hearing what other people are uh, doing and how they're doing the process and everything like that. If you guys like this video, please feel free to hit the like button. It tells YouTube a lot of good things about the video. And also subscribe if you want to see more videos from me in the future. Thank you so much for watching, guys.